Hello and welcome to this episode of the Pretty Girls Club. So as you can tell by the title, we are looking through my fashion eras of my lifetime. I've lived quite a long life, so it's about time we look back. And um, honestly, I'm a bit nervous because this is specifically looking back on my fashion over the years. So um, did I even have a fashion sense back then? I don't know. I was also a child who wore a trash bag and walked along Orchard Road. So, you know, like, why am I talking about fashion? I guess it's because I'm Singapore's top fashionista. So in this episode, we're going to take a walk down memory lane. I think we are starting as young as from my secondary school days or maybe even younger. I have no idea. So Kaying has prepared a compilation of a whole bunch of pictures uh, from <laughs> horrible times of my life. And we're going to look back at like what I used to wear, how I used to dress, uh, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> and where um where we are today you know how far we've come from that so how this is going to work is that we're really going to take a look at all my different eras so Kain's going to send me a bunch of pictures from a certain era in my life so like the, the 2010s you know like my ugly birthdays you know i don't know i don't know okay i don't know what to expect okay so um yeah i'm a bit nervous but i guess we were all ugly once right and i guess it's what's on the inside that counts right Okay, silence. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's take a look at the first set of images that I've received. I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, so this goes back to like super, super young, my baby era. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so cute eh. <laughs> Do you hear me say I'm so cute? Not I was so cute because it's the same girl you see in these pictures right here today. Okay, I think this is very, very cute. So honestly, right? Um, I think my mom did a great job, great job in dressing me. And then when I started dressing myself, that was the problem. That's that's where everything went downhill, you know. But okay, so since for all you uh, audio listeners, let's describe this picture. So it is a very cute picture of me in traditional way. I guess we were celebrating something. Lord knows what we were celebrating, lah. But I look very happy. I smile until. Honestly, my cheeks very cute. But I guess we're talking about my fashion. So what's up with that long ass chain though? <laughs> I guess I was a child. So maybe I just had a tiny ass neck. <laughs> so, so this chain was just like insanely long on me. But actually it's normal leg, you know? Yeah, but okay. Very cute. Pink and blue traditional outfit. The next picture, I think hilarious. This dress, my facial expression is truly what I was wearing that day. But this dress, simple, very cute. Girl next door vibes. <laughs> Like, oh, I just want to go for a walk in the park. Stop talking to me. And then I'm just, I just look like I'm plotting your entire family's murder. Like, this picture is very intense. You need to, honestly, if you're listening to this on Spotify right now, please just look at the video on Spotify as well. Because <laughs> this picture is worth, <laughs> is worth it. So yeah, I look very evil. But I guess... Mm, quite spot on lah. So let's take a look at my next era. So I'm I'm grateful that in my baby era, my mom dressed me lah. Cause her fashion sense not bad, not bad. Okay, next one. Oh my god, next one is my hideous era. <laughs> okay, so this is where things get downhill because I started dressing myself. So like, what did I know? I was a child. Like, who allowed me? To go buy clothes, who allowed me to walk into a wardrobe and pick something? Literally, who allowed that? So, honestly, it sounds like it's my mom's fault. But anyways, this is the 2010s. Um, and I was in secondary school at that point. So, <laughs> we start off extremely painfully strong uh, with my prom picture. Yes, I wore this for prom. Wow, I look at bets, yeah. Come on, man. What's with that silver-ass, shiny-ass bracelet that's, like, glowing? My hair was so insanely long. Like, did I not know salons existed or what? What is too much? Okay, honestly, this dress, very simple. I think I was at a point in my life where I was really trying to, like, hide my body and I started, like, hating myself at this point. Okay, maybe not started, but I was fully into hating myself at this point. So, yeah, I didn't really like how I looked. Didn't really want to show, like, my skin or, like, just, like, dress up dress up, dress up. You know, I was very happy to like just cover my body as much as I could. So yeah, I wore this long sleeve black dress that was like really just pretty shapeless. Nothing that would accentuate anything to show how my body would look, you know. So so yeah, I actually wore heels, strappy heels. Who am I, Sia? But yeah, I remember this being prom. I think my mom did my makeup. I had like purple makeup on. Wow. And my hair was just crazy long. It was like a full like it felt, I think it looks like it's a meter long, yeah. <laughs> it's so insanely long. It's so weird. Okay, so let's never look at my prom photos again. Oh my gosh, the next one. The next one is gets it gets worse. It gets worse. Okay, I remember this dress. This dress is literally from Cotton On, guys. So it was the era where dresses 
it was like that bandage skirt. Oh my god, bandage bandage skirts were so in. So like, it was a a dress like a one piece dress, just that the bottom half of the dress was a bandage skirt, and the top half is just like looks like a t shirt ah, honestly. <laughs> so but yeah, it was just a one piece dress. So this is a floral green and pink, very unflattering floral print. <laughs> Not even a nice kind of floral, okay. And my hair once again still insanely long. Never in my life saw a pair of scissors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I know I remember this day. I remember this day so clearly. I was it was my friend's like farewell party. It was at some like I think it was a condo or like some event space or something. And then we all went to the washroom and my friend was like, Oh my god, stand there, like act like this is like a alley, like a runway thing. Can you post? And then I stood there and then like I actually held the walls and both sides of my hands and I posed to the camera. Who do I think I am, Sia? Wow, this picture is too much. But honestly, I think this was the start of me. Wearing cotton on, <laughs> so I still shop cotton on. I still wear cotton on stuff. If but they have like more inclusive sizes online, so yeah, I don't shop there as much. Well, the next one, honestly, this whole era, I just am so like, what was going on with my hair? But I guess we're not talking about it. We should talk about my fashion, which is even worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, so the next one was like the first time my mother let me on my house like that. <laughs> That's how I look in the picture. So, if I'm not wrong, I'm wearing everything I was wearing in this picture was like. At some point, my mom's or like stuff she didn't wear anymore. It was just stuff we already had at home. So it's this very random like maroon pair of shorts and this floral tank top, and then I wore it with a pink cardigan. And I was carrying this NYUK bag. <laughs> it's an NYUK handbag, and I was wearing like ballet flats, like cotton non flats. So I did think surprisingly, considering I was like in secondary school, my makeup was actually pretty good. But fashion sense wise, like gotta go, man. Like. I think for that era, I dressed very appropriately because we were all in our ugly girl era. So, <laughs> so I look fine. But these are things I probably would never wear together again. And and I think something interesting to note is that I don't really recall. I think maybe the first time I went shopping like with my mom to buy clothes for myself, and when I started like oh I was going out more and like just out things on the weekend and stuff like not. Yeah, like my mom wasn't dressing me anymore at that point. I was I was growing up. I guess that's when I shopped at places like Cotton On. But I guess I always struggled to find things that were in my size or were very flattering for me. So I was more inclined to just wearing hand me downs or wearing stuff I already had at home. Hence this monstrosity that you see in front of you. <laughs> okay, next one. Oh my gosh, I remember this. Okay, this is literally the same exact outfit but different color. Different color, like um, colorway. <laughs> so it's the same exact thing. I'm wearing blue, navy blue shorts this time. I'm wearing a black tank top this time, and a flannel. Who allow? This is flannel, right? Who allow me to wear flannel? Blue flannel, some more. Come on, man. At least give me the classic red one, you know. <laughs> blue flannel is a bit much. So same thing. I think my makeup was surprisingly not bad. I wore the same damn ballet flats because I used to wear my shoes until my toes would like stick out of it. <laughs> like until there would be. It was so worn out that I needed to buy a new pair, but I guess that's what, like, I guess it's quite normal for like families that don't like, like you know, when you don't come from a family that splurges and you just use something until you really cannot use, then you buy a new pair. So it was a very like, yeah, very like thrifty, normal person way to live in my. That's how I was brought up, right? So I would always wear, I would buy the same thing. Over and over again. So like, if I had this black ballet flats and I loved it a lot and I could match it with every outfit, I would always wear until cannot wear anymore. And then I'll go back to the store and buy the same exact thing again. So I never really explored like, oh, actually, should I try a different color? Should I wear shoes that like are maybe not black? You know. And I think that also shows even today. Like I'm very inclined to wearing dark footwear. I will never look to like getting anything light or colorful. I always just want to get a black pair of something because I know it will match. Every outfit I have, so I guess that that's quite practical, and and it's not really you don't really dress for fashion, you really dress for practicality and functionality. So yeah, I did that a lot since secondary school. Clearly, I mean the same. This is the same damn outfits here, yeah, different colorway only. <laughs> oh my god, I wanna say you see, I just said that this next outfit is the same exact bandage dress from Cotton On, just that it's a different print. So instead of floral, it is black and white stripes. Oh my god, I remember this. This was a class barbecue we had and we played block catching after this and I was a loser in a dress that like ran around playing block catching. And I was like, nobody tell me the memo. You all wear shorts, what the hell? So yeah, that was... Same thing. I used to do that a lot. Same thing, different colours. Next one, this literally was something my mom owned. I did not buy this top. So this was my favourite colour actually at this point in my life. Like teal, turquoise, like anything of that 
color range like that was my favorite thing oh my god and i walked wow i was cooler than the gen z before they were even before even they born here yeah. because <laughs> look at me walking around with my digital camera who am i eh? and then this was just us going to like on a weekend going to watch movie <laughs> so yeah i wore this random t-shirt and same thing i wore it with like that i guess a bit more formal looking short so it wasn't too casual okay let's see the next era so that was my 2020s Oh, that was my, sorry, that was, oh, that was 2020 sets, yeah. That was my 2010s. Now we're going to look at 2012. I remember 2012 to be the year that, wow, what was going on, yeah? So 2012 was the same year I enrolled in poly, actually. So I was year one in poly at this point. So, okay, this first picture I remember very clearly was Mother's Day. We all went to Riders Cafe for my mom's day, oh, my mom's birthday. My, for Mother's Day <laughs> and actually funnily enough this is exactly what I said about my 2010s so that stupid dress I wore for prom this is the same exact type of dress just that it's in a different colour and obviously I I look better because I was <laughs> grown <laughs> and wow I used to do this so often it would be the same exact thing or whatever I was comfortable wearing but I would just have diff- I would have it in like two colours so I never really explored and I'd never like I hate, I really did not like how I looked and I did not like my body. So I really just was very happy to wear things that were very baggy. And yeah, wow, sad. And I look back, I'm like, man, I actually look pretty cute. I should have dressed up better. Oh my God, okay, this, this, this next picture I love. This was like a trip to Malaysia with my family. And I was just wearing a white top, black leggings. And I think I was wearing my dog mats. Yeah, I was wearing my dog mats and a denim jacket. Okay, this era... It's something I would literally wear today. So I'm not ashamed of this. This is the first look I'm not ashamed of. Okay, like my baby my baby ones are so I'm not ashamed of. <laughs> but this look is actually very aged very well. I will wear it any day today. I still wear my shades on my head until now. But but yes, so I was just getting to that. But that owl necklace though. What in the boogie street is this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> come on, man. This is so like Okay, first of all, I don't even think I bought that on my, on my own. I think someone bought it for me because not very me, not very like... I never really wore like necklaces like this. But I do remember in that era of my life, I at home, I had a whole bunch of trinkets, like random rings, random necklaces that like... I guess people gifted to me or like over the years, just maybe stuff my mom bought for me, you know? And I never really wore them a lot. I was never really into changing my jewellery. And I was just like... Yeah, okay, I'll just wear whatever that's comfy. But yeah, I do like this look a lot. Aged very well. I will not wear this necklace ever again. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my god, the next one was literally my birthday. I think this was... I think I was 18. Yeah, it was my 18th birthday. So at this point, I was living in this condo and I had a party with like all my friends. And they all came over to like... We had like a random bbq at my house so this dress i remember also from cotton on and i remember when i wore this i was so self-conscious because i thought it was it was like way too short for me and it it is like looking at the picture and looking at how i stood you can tell that i was like very like awkward <laughs> like just like oh no is this dress too short but yeah you know in in clearly the way i stood you could tell that i was a bit a bit insecure don't know what for but anyways i did actually surprisingly wear boots quite a bit at this point i remember this these boots that i was wearing in this picture was they were killing me they were like not even my size they were like a size too small and i had big ass feet my whole life so i struggled not only to find clothes sometimes but also shoes and that was so frustrating also you can tell that i clearly really loved a long straight hair (laughs) up till 2012 but yeah i think i look pretty cute here so it could it could be worse, you know. It could be, it could have been way worse. So I think not bad. Okay, let's look at my twenty thirteen <laughs> fashion sense. At this point, I was year two poly. <laughs> okay, this first picture is I was in Korea. It was actually for a school trip. So what I was wearing in this picture is actually the freaking Korea trip T shirt. So not really my fashion sense, but. Okay, like, not too far from my fashion sense. <laughs> I used to wear leggings as pants and I did not give a shit because for me, I clearly struggled to find like bottoms that would fit me well. And I was never really like a... I mean, I wore skirts, but not all the time and I would prefer to wear pants. So because I could never really find pants that fit me well or like just a nice tailored or something that fit me nicely, 
I just resorted to wearing leggings all the time because it was so easy to find leggings anywhere I went. And, and because I shopped cotton on a lot, I always went to cotton on and the size L leggings would fit me. In any colorway, any print, I was like, oh, if I'm feeling fancy, I'll wear something like this line, this picture, which was like, what? Aztec leggings. You know, this one, okay, this one is just green, but I remember having a pair of Aztec ones as well. So, yeah. Also, I wore Converse's a lot growing up. And I still do. I still own a, a, like a couple of pairs of Converse's. I think they are damn solid shoe. But yes... Let's see the next. Oh my god, who is she? <laughs> so this was actually, I remember this, it was actually for a photo shoot for the CCA I was in in Poly. So, oh my god, I was so self-conscious for this picture because they, the whole theme of it was like colour blocking. And I remember like, uh, basically within the CCA, we had different departments, right? So everybody from the same department were, would dress in like the a similar like colour theme. So we all, it was a very colourful photo shoot and... and the people that I was paired up with, we were all trying to dress in pink and green. So actually this pink top was my own and I think it was cotton on as well. Actually, I think this whole outfit was cotton on. So yeah, I, I guess as much as I didn't, I was pretty insecure and I didn't really like my body. I was actually quite brave because I did wear a lot of like bandage skirts and like pencil skirts like this. So so yeah, I this pair of heels that you see me wearing, I also wear just from cotton on. So I swear my entire wardrobe just used to be cotton on because it was like the only thing that was so readily accessible and available that carried my size. Yeah, and this was like before even I started shopping at places like H&M, you know, other other like fashion brands that are also very accessible. Uh. So yeah, I actually think I look pretty good here. I think I remember this was one of the first few times my hair was like curled and I had really long hair at this point. So I was like, actually, my hair looks kind of nice. So yeah, I think I look pretty cute. I look like an office lady. But I was a child, huh? Don't objectify me, huh? You Tankin Lian lovers. Anyways, let's look at my next era. It's 2015. 2015 was the year I graduated from poly. So hopefully it got better. I don't know. I'm scared. Oh, damn. Okay, this is my 21st birthday. <laughs> We're going right into it, huh? Okay, so you can see the clear upgrade from my uh, 18th birthday where I wore that short-ass dress I was very uncomfortable in. But yeah, you tell that I was a bit more like... At this point, I was working already, I remember. So uh, we had this party at like a function room <laughs> at the condo I was staying at at that point. So uh, yeah, this outfit, something I styled myself. <laughs> Okay, like, I think it aged not bad. It could have it could have been way worse. So um this asymmetrical skirt I think was from ASOS. I think yeah, at this point I started shopping online already. Cause I think I finally like dared to shop online and had like the means to shop online because I was already working, had my own money, my own savings, right? So I shopped online and I guess I was trying to figure out my style properly at this point. And I think once I discovered ASOS, it was very life-changing for me because once you once you figure out what your size is for this site and once you yeah, once you like kinda lock that down, you know like, okay, does your size vary from like are your bottoms size different from your tops, you know? And for me it is. So I just had to make sure I was getting the right size for certain things at different cuts and all that. So figuring that out was a big win for me because that's when I guess I started to finally style myself well. So I think I think looking back at my twenty first, actually not bad. But yeah. Interesting, interesting choice of uh, colours. But my theme for my birthday, just to put it out there, was was black and gold. Hence the, I was wearing like black and you see gold balloons and all that. Yeah, so let's see what's, what else we got in 2015. Oh my gosh, this was in Japan. It was uh, during Halloween. So I did the classic cop-out of got no Halloween outfit. So I don't know what to wear. But how about I just wear a black dress and black everything and act gothic? <laughs> so this was me doing a very botched attempt because I was so insecure that I didn't dare to like actually put on like a makeup look that was very out of character for me. So the, the closest thing I got to like actually trying to dress up into this like witchy or like dark gothic type of look was literally just by doing dark lipstick. And I didn't even like... I just did like a smoky eye-ish. I didn't dare to do like eyeliner that would make me look like intense or scary. Plus, I was in a country like Japan where like uh, to some extent, people look at you some type of way when you're brown. So I also a bit like, I don't want more attention. Like, I don't want to bring more attention to myself. Plus, I was already like, I'm typically the odd one out in most friend groups. <laughs> like in big friend groups especially already just because of I am a plus size girl. I'm a plus size woman. I am brown. And when you're in a place like Japan, I was very like, yeah, I'm not very comfortable to just fully be myself and wild out. So this was the most daring I did to go uh, when it came to like trying to dress up for Halloween. But it was nice. It worked out pretty well because I borrowed that cap from a friend and I had that leather, pleather, like, like 
jacket thingy that I got from, I think it was a H&M or Zara in Japan itself. So yeah, it fit me pretty well. I think I look kind of cute. This also aged quite well. So let's look at my next era. It's the 2016 year. I'm a bit nervous. What was I doing in 2016? Lord knows. Oh my god, I was becoming Singapore's top fashion influencer. So this is truly, I would say, my peak fashion era because I literally wore a trash bag on Orchard Road. And honestly, how many of y'all can say you've done that? Huh? So 2016 was truly the era we're all here for. And hopefully some of y'all listening to this, you have watched the Fashion Police video and were following me since then because that is clearly one of the most iconic things that has happened in my life. So wearing, choosing to wear a trash bag and walk along Orchard Road was like, one of the most unhinged things I could have possibly done in my life. And funnily enough, I remember this day so clearly because I was working at an agency at that point. And on this exact day, I remember taking leave or taking a day off from work because I went to a job interview at Mediacorp. So I went to a job interview at Mediacorp in the morning and then... At my job interview, I remember being asked about this fashion police video because it was so viral. Not my video, but like the one I was parodying because it was a video called production. And I I was asked about it in my interview and I laughed about it and I said, actually, finally enough, I'm going, funnily enough, I'm going to film a parody. And my the, the person who eventually chose to hire me, that boss, she, she knew very well I was going to film a parody, but she didn't know I was going to wear a trash bag, walk along Orchard Road, do all that. So eventually I make this parody, it goes viral, and somehow I get the media cop job. <laughs> Which is so funny to me because this was literally the day, the day I applied for that job. And I got the job and yeah, I was working at Mediacorp for like, I think maybe a year after that. And then I quit to do like Pretty Please stuff full time. One of the best decisions I ever made. But <laughs> anyways, this was a very funny day. And same thing, I think in this in this uh, picture, in the trash bag picture, you can also see that I was still wearing leggings as pads because I really never gave that up even though... I was at a point in my life where I knew people made fun of that and I knew people were always like very critical about people who wore leggings as pants. Okay, so now we're moving on to the year 2017. So at this point, I was fully doing Pretty Please stuff full-time and I think this was the first actual year where I was fully immersed into doing my own content full-time. So that's what I... Yeah, so I guess... That's where you will see the first look. So this, oh my god, this picture is so iconic. So I think this was my first ever music parody. It was my Cardi B Bodak Yellow parody. So I did it for Deepa Valley. And oh, I love this picture so much. So I wore this red sari and it's something that I actually had at home. So when it comes to wearing traditional Indian outfits, I always, I was always very comfortable to wear what I already had at home. And my childhood was like, my mom has... My mom is very fashionable and my mom used to sew growing up. So my mom was very into fashion. She has a lot of clothes. And every time it came to wearing like a sari or something very traditional, I would just basically go to my mom's closet lo, and just grab something my mom already had. And especially when it was a sari, I basically needed her help to put it on. So she helped me. Every time you see me in a sari, my mom put me in it, okay? <laughs> so yeah, this outfit, very iconic. I wore this, walked around Little India, filmed this, my first ever rap parody. And you see Minnie, my dog, in the background, the little cutie. Okay, so yeah, I think I look damn bomb. My friend Sahar did my makeup here. I look so freaking good. Ugh, me in traditional wear is... Honestly, very iconic. Okay, next, let's see the next picture. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the next two pictures are actually from my Esquire photo shoot. So, wow, Siu Fang and Gabe. I worked with them. Siu Fang styled me. She did such an amazing job. So, this one not really my fashion sense. Lah, so, she can take the full credit there. She styled me. I look so freaking good. I remember this gold, this like sequin dress. I remember it being from ASOS. So, yeah, when I saw it at the shoot, like I was like, damn, I've never worn a dress like that. And this is easily one of my, one of the best photo shoots I've ever done. And obviously throughout my career as Pretty Please, I've been to a couple of magazines like photo shoots or like just photo shoots in general. And I have been some level of uncomfortable because I always don't know if the clothing would fit me. And I always don't know how my makeup's going to be and stuff like that. So I always got very nervous. And I have been to a couple of shoots where... There was one shoot I remember so clearly where I was, it wasn't just myself in the who was getting featured, it was two other two other creators, and they are like very straight size, like actually pretty skinny people. So I went there and I remember the stylist pulled out a rack of clothing to say that everything that they had was sample size. And I remember being so upset because Oh, the self-hate I went through in my mind. Like, I literally was called to do a feature and I was getting featured for the work I do as Pretty Please and the content I create. And then, like, 
it's not like y'all don't see me in my videos, right? I'm obviously plus size. I obviously will not fit sample size. So I remember that bummed me out and the self-hate that I went, went through in my mind was so sad. So that happens a lot. And I think at this point, like, I guess I was obviously more vocal in general because I started creating content. I started talking about how I feel about things and my opinions and stuff. So I definitely started to like, these, these experiences shape the way I use my platform as well and made me like realize that I need to talk about these things. I need to talk about body positivity. I need to talk about at least body neutrality. Like stop talking about people's bodies, you know, stop doing things that make people feel like shit when they shouldn't and just be more inclusive. Like, especially when you're going gonna to invite someone down for a shoot, the least you can do is check their size, make sure you have their size. If not, what's the point? Why am I going to wear a naked photo shoot? Ah? Anyways, so the next look was my the new paper feature and this was... I think this was the first actual news like feature I ever had. So it was a style section and it was a really fun interview. So I wore like a full black outfit and used my trash bag as like uh, outerwear, <laughs> like a nice cape that I had. So I think I looked damn bomb in this picture. Like my makeup was also so freaking nice. The makeup artist killed it. So yeah, this this was the the I guess the era of pretty please in in the public eye, <laughs> like fully. Okay, so let's go to the next the next year. Let's look at 2018. Oh, damn. Okay, so... Wow, I'm damn hot, yeah. So, <laughs> so clearly, I'm well into dressing myself at this point. And I got... And obviously, as you can tell throughout the years, I got better. So this red dress, I think every time I wear it, like, people just... Wow, oh, people just like... Damn. They need to stop looking at me. But also... If you're a woman, I don't mind, you know? So <laughs> so anyways, this dress, this this was actually, these two pictures are actually from a, from a trip, a work trip to New York. And I think when I was there, I did feel a bit more comfortable in the way I dressed. And I also did feel, I did see some form of like, I don't know, I, comfort or like joy in the fact that uh, people wouldn't judge me as much. And there were like way more plus size people in a space like New York. So I didn't feel really like self-conscious. And I guess you can tell just in the way that I'm looking in this picture with me in the red dress. I look damn confident, yeah. Who am I? So yeah, this is a dress I still have that I don't really wear anymore because it makes me a bit nervous to wear it out. But I should. And the next one is a picture at Times Square. So obviously it was really cool. So I had outerwear on most of like this trip. I did think this was really stylish and I did love like the fur, the little like fake faux fur thingy was something that was detachable. So it made this a very wearable outerwear because you could just wear it as a cardigan. And yeah, I did think I looked really good here. And this was not bad. I think it was really casual and simple, but like a very like elevator look just with nice outerwear. So yeah, I think I look pretty cute. <laughs> okay, let's see the next one. Okay, 2019. 2019 is the true era of it was the pretty please brown face here. Actually, get it right. It's the Dennis Chiu brown face here. Okay, so this first picture in my 2019 era, this is a trip to Korea. Wow, this is damn nice, yeah. So I had this one like pleather like bomber jacket from Guess. And I actually worked with Guess a couple of years ago. So I got to like pick out a bunch of clothes that I that I liked, lah, you know. And and this was like the first time I shopped at a place like like Guess. So obviously I had to pick something that I knew was like very iconic, very stylish, something that was a bit timeless. So this bomber jacket was really iconic. I wore it so often and it honestly elevated so many looks, so many really simple casual looks and just made me look damn stylish, like for no reason at all. But then eventually the bomber jacket, like, yeah, it just started like tearing, peeling apart because obviously it's fake leather. So I no longer have it, which is quite sad. But yeah, this like mesh, like silver blouse that I wore, same thing, all the pants that I kept wearing at this point in my life were still like one step away from being leggings because they were like cotton, very soft, elastic waistband, had pockets, but they were not explicitly leggings. They were just like cotton pants that obviously my body stretched out to the point where it would obviously, it would look like leggings lah. So yeah, I wore these pants like crazy. I wore them every other day. I had them in a couple of colours and I wore them non-stop. So the next, uh, the next outfit is this like, wow, what is this looks yeah? Honestly, I wish I dared to dress like this. I just don't bother anymore. I dare to, but like I don't bother. I don't try as hard to like, look cute anymore and I need to because it makes me feel better about myself but yeah this was a pink dress that I bought from uh, ASOS and it was the material on it felt a bit like it was very similar to denim is it corduroy okay. yes corduroy so so I never really owned anything in this like pink as well but I knew this dress was a bit too revealing to wear on its own plus I just didn't feel comfortable ah. so one day I was like you know what? I really want to wear it I think it's very cute but I just decided to wear this long sleeve top long sleeve top underneath and it worked out really well so I should do that more with dresses that I I think are too revealing and I wouldn't want to wear it out on its own <laughs> shut up <Sia. laughs> so 
this next outfit is me dressed as um, a bowl of laksa and also roti john. So in twenty, I think twenty nineteen, yeah, I did this. Um, I did this like video. Uh, web series it was a food series where i was a host for this like cooking cooking show like cooking contest type thing oh my gosh this was the era where i just hired we san by the way so we san had a field day laughing his ass off looking at me dressed up as roti john and laksa but this was so funny like i had so much fun doing this show and i need to do more like super random fun gigs like this again because i really had so much fun and obviously style i was styled in a way i would never style myself <laughs> and what wow, is that funny and the effort that was went into like creating these pieces to fit me was really a lot of like effort and yeah props props to the team I worked with like they really killed it but you see the same the same year I also can look like this wow I look damn good <laughs> so this sequin black dress and ankle boots are such a like simple combo but it looked I look so glam and so dressed up maybe it also helps that I was standing on a red carpet <laughs> but even my hair everything just looked like wow it's looks so good. Eh? You tell me there's a scene out of Gossip Girl, I believe. Anyways, so <laughs> this same dress I wore on my birthday the following year. So yeah, I guess you can repurpose clothes and not just wear them once, you know, foreign concept. But yeah, this dress was really, really nice. I think I am, I think I still have it, but I don't really wear it anymore. Because you know, when you keep sequin, sequin pieces for too long, eventually the sequins start to like, like wear and tear and then they start to fall off a bit and then they get stuck to other pieces of clothing and then they just get damaged. So yeah, I don't really wear a lot of sequin anymore. But this look was damn nice. Okay, let's look at 2020. Oh, this is where we're reaching present day. But 2020 was like, I guess, COVID era, right before COVID hit. Damn, okay, so this this was part of a photo shoot I did for my initial podcast, Try Me Bitch. So this, I wore this lace black dress and I styled it with so many different props. So I had like, pictures that I could just use forever <laughs> so I shot this with my friend Jaden and this is me in my uh, Rudolph but sexy era anyways <laughs> the next picture was actually oh my god the next picture was me on a cruise for the first time since I was a child and also um this was when me and Shark were secretly dating and then I bring him on a cruise damn loser damn loser like the whole world know you know but anyways we weren't secretly dating we just weren't telling people we were dating except our, our like, closest friends and then we were just out in public doing things and then people are like oh do you know you're all together and I'm like I just want you to know so, <laughs> so this is quite funny because I shy and then <laughs> now I'm just there like oh, I'm nervous I'm asking Shark to take pictures of me <laughs> and I was so I was so freaking nervous oh my god lame yeah but yeah this I love this outfit I'm wearing so much this piece is like a mesh like over like you know just wear it over what do you call that cover up I guess you could people a lot of people will use this as like a beach cover up type thing so just a mesh outerwear that I have always worn as a dress so I just wear it with like a tube top and like a stick on bra and shorts underneath so I cover as much of my body as I want to. And then I just throw this over and it's easily one of my most comfortable and very, very like, one of my favourite outfits, honestly, like my all-time favourite outfits. And then one day, I saw Nikki tutorials on El on the Ellen show and she was wearing this. And I was like, damn, Nikki's wearing this, like Nikki has this same exact top, which I thought was really cool, but I think she styled it with like pants and everything. So yeah, love this. I still wear it whenever I see it out of the wash, I would just take it and wear it again and again. So it's a very over one piece that I have. So this next picture, you will see me in my mask wearing era because this was when COVID hit. And oh my god, I love I love a denim skirt. I don't ever I don't wear it often because I don't think uh these skirts or like short skirts in general are very comfortable for me to sit in because like the fupa and the stomach and the everything. So it's just a lot going on. But when I'm standing, I think a denim skirt just looks so good. So even just with a simple t-shirt, I'm wearing like a Cardi B t-shirt here. But I think paired together, it's just it's just a very cute, simple, casual outfit. And I love a denim skirt. I just, I recently bought like a denim maxi skirt. So I'm starting to get into that. But I don't really wear a lot of denim because I feel it doesn't fit me very well because I have a dump truck. So, <laughs> so, so like, I mean, I have a big ass, right? So, like, it doesn't really fit well because it might fit well on the ass and then won't really fit well on the waist. So, it's just always, I need to go and get, get these things altered so they actually fit me and my body. But I don't ever get to doing it, so I don't wear them often. So, the next two pictures are actually from a shoot I did with Harper's Bazaar. And this is also one of my favorite photo shoots I've ever done because... I was actually styled like so well and the team I worked with really like they did such a great job and this custom suit that I'm wearing is from my friend Cheryl who runs uh, her own custom custom brand called 
her own custom tailor brand called 38. So Cheryl is insanely talented. She made this custom suit with like half half black white like print for me and the lining inside the suit is like lion print. It's really really cool. So I have a whole video I did with Cheryl where we like show you everything all the custom suit the custom stuff that she did for myself and my brother so uh this suit is i look so good in a power suit like what even okay so love the suit love that cheryl you are amazing at what you do and this green gown in the other picture so i bought this online it's like a velvet gown i've worn this so often that the strap <laughs> the strap on one of the sides have already popped that's probably why i don't wear it anymore but it's such a nice like I love a slit. I love a dress with a slit. It's so flattering. And a slit's like not too high. So it's actually like, I dare to wear this in public, you know. And this jacket wasn't mine. It was something that um, they start me with at the shoot. But it works so well. Like this this shade of brown with the green velvet worked. So Would have never paired it together on my own. Looks, looks great. So yeah, that was my 2020 era. Let's go to the next year. 2021. Oh, okay. So this is me wearing a dress from BU Co. So they are a local plus size brand. And I love their stuff. So I have so many pieces from them. They have a lot of really nice pants. And I guess this is also the start of like me. I think around 20, 2021, around then I started to like actually explore local plus size brands. And I stopped like assuming that shopping online and just ASOS was like the only place that like guarantee will have my size so it's really nice to like discover local brands and super grateful whenever they reached out to like work together because it really meant a lot to like have pieces that i actually love added to my wardrobe and stuff that are timeless lah, that i can wear and use reuse for years and that actually fit me so well and i was not trying to squeeze into something so yeah i really shout out all the brands that like have ever reached out local brands that have reached out to work with me <clears throat> when it came to like fashion stuff because it was so rare for me to ever do a fashion collab or work with fashion brands because nobody usually had my size so yeah i love this dress elastic waistband but the wrap detail is so flattering especially if you're like a bit self-conscious and it just looks so good i also was wearing melissa shoes in the picture love melissa shoes very comfy okay let's look at 2022 oh 2022 this picture's from shark's birthday <laughs> so this is not i would i would say this is not my typical style to wear something with like that is this loud or like very like noisy print wise but I, I don't know I thought this was really cute I bought this from ASOS and I thought the groovy like print on it was really I thought it was really nice and I also liked that it was not a bodycon like cinching type of dress and it was just like comfy lo. so yeah I didn't expect to actually like feel really comfy or I really like this something that was so like not my typical print or style but yeah I like this dress a lot I thought it was really comfy and I guess as you can tell, I'm clearly a bit more open to wearing things out of my comfort zone nowadays. And <clears throat> when it comes to prints, colours, like I used to always stick to monochromatic stuff. You will see in like maybe in my poly years and stuff, I wore a lot of black and I wore a lot of like even grey, white. Like I was very used to wearing those colours and you wouldn't really see me wear a lot of like print. But then actually if you look back at my 2010 days, I wore things like that floral bandage <laughs> skirt dress and the black and white prints. You know, I was super okay with prints when I was younger and... Yeah, I actually did to wear freaking flannel, floral. I wore all that when I was younger because I know I, I didn't really like have an opinion on them yet. And I guess I had to wear it and realize, I, hey, I look like shits here. And then I had an opinion on it. <laughs> okay, I really didn't look that bad. But but yeah, I think now you clearly can see that like I wore a lot of prints, was trying to figure out what I liked, what I didn't like. And then went to like just wearing monochrom monochromatic stuff because didn't really like how I look. Didn't really want to like have any attention brought to myself. And then I started to like obviously have a career in the public eye that was all online and everywhere. And then I started to explore my fashion sense again, which I think is quite nice, la, quite full circle because la, you see me wearing loud ass prints now and I'm not too opposed to it as I used to be. Okay, so I guess if you want to know how I look in 2023, well, bitch, you're looking at her. But also, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I've grown a lot like when it comes to like daring to wear certain things and... um knowing what looks good on my body because I think that's truly what I learned the most now looking back at the fashion, my fashion eras as well. Knowing what's, knowing what kind of cuts and designs and prints and are flattering on me and like things like my skin tone, you know, my makeup, what's going to complement these things and what's just going to look better on, on me lah. So learning that was truly like, I guess how I got to where I am today where I, I know what, I know what looks good. I know what are certain things I never want to wear or like, I'm not going to gravitate to certain colors or prints because I just, 
I just know I will not look good. And I guess you know yourself best, right? And and what else? I guess if you wear leggings as pants, by all means, do what you want to do. Do whatever's comfortable. Literally, you wearing or other people wearing? You wearing, right? So wear what you want to wear. Cring, cring. <laughs> We've come to my favorite part of every episode. It is time for your unsolicited advice of the week. I say, if you ugly, don't wear clothes. Woo! No, I'm kidding. I say, wear whatever ever you want as long as it's not inappropriate for the occasion so yeah i mean at the end of the day if you're figuring out fashion sense your style you're trying to switch things up you don't like your style you want to elevate it i think really just do whatever works for you take your time to figure it out like make whatever fashion mistakes you might make i'm saying mistakes in air quotes because is it really a mistake if somebody else doesn't like it you know who cares right who cares so let's take a little bit of a rewind to in 2019 when i In 2019, when I was on that Korea trip I mentioned, I literally had a picture of me. I thought I looked bomb as hell. And I was wearing that pair of pants that I told you guys I just have in different colorways. And freaking the dumbest bitch in the world, aka Xiaxue, literally reposted the picture, a picture of me living my best life on a Korea trip to literally just make fun of how I look. And she was like, anybody gonna tell her? And I think she was referring to my fucking vagina. I think she was referring to my crotch. And honestly, I think... People who, like, call you out for things like a visible panty line, like a fucking camel toe. It's like, my vagina is there. We all know it. Like, what? Like, so it's like, don't don't be shocked. (laughs) Don't be shocked I have a vagina. (laughs) You know, so I I don't know. I think it's very gross. And, like, for someone to zoom in on your crotch and look at your crotch in a picture and to, like, be like, Oh, is that a camel toe? You do realise you're literally saying, are those her vagina lips, right? You do realise that's what you're saying when you call out things like a camel toe. So maybe literally get your grimy ass eyes off my crotch and just look at my face. Okay, no, but seriously, I think, yeah, I think people who comment on things like that are just honestly nothing better to do. You have to be damn free uh, to zoom into someone's crotch. You have to be some level of free or some level of getting cancelled on the internet and have no job and have no friends, you know? You have to be some level of that for like, to look at someone's crotch. But anyways, um, I guess it's my fault, right? Because I have a crotch. Y'all have eyes. So it's my fault. <laughs> I guess it's my fucking fault at the end of the day. But yeah, no, I think, I think make all the mistakes you want to make. I think as long as you're not wearing something that I guess, yeah, it's inappropriate for the occasion, I really think you're fine. But also, pay attention to like, like if you are looking to like, if you enjoy fashion, you want to see like what, what would look better on yourself. You know, actually try things that are out of your comfort zone. Lah. You know, especially if you shop online and stuff like that. I'm sure you're constantly surrounded. Like you see so many options of things that you wouldn't typically look at. Like maybe try it one day or maybe like take a look back like what I just did at your fashion eras and be like, you know what? Last time I used to wear this a lot. Why do I not do that anymore? And then figure out why you stopped wearing something or why you stopped enjoying doing something that brought you a lot of joy in your life. You know, Sim- just, just do that if you want to like switch it up one day. But I think as long as you're comfortable and you're not harming anyone, I think do whatever you want. And at the end of the day, if you're inside ugly, you're outside ugly. So <laughs> that's the takeaway from this episode, okay? But if you're inside beautiful, then you're outside beautiful, okay? <laughs> I'm kidding, you're ugly. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so anyways, love y'all. I think, I can't believe I shame myself on this episode like that. I hope y'all had fun though. And if you listened to this whole episode and you were clueless about anything I talked about, <laughs> then what the hell, man? <laughs> you can watch this episode on Spotify, literally on the go, watch it. And yes, hopefully you're watching it. But let me know what was your favorite Pretty Please era or Pretty Era before us, Pretty Please, you know? Let me know. If you pick the 2010s one, then please unfollow me now. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you on the next episode. <laughs>